Well, before your race is due to start. Now, our race is at 8 o'clock, but by 7 o'clock, we have to be warmed up and ready to race. All six athletes, not just the four that are running, but also the two reserves, go down to the warm-up track and have to warm up as if they're running. The reason the two reserves have to go down the warm-up as if they're running is just in case during the warm-up, one or two of the other four guys who are running gets injured, at least the, war the two reserves are halfway through their warm-up and they can actually take part as well, if, if, if need be. Now what happens is it roughly takes somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half to warm up for your race. So all of us will warm up for somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. So we went down at five o'clock. Apart from the six athletes, there was two team physios and two team masseurs. And what happens is you go down at five o'clock, team physios will check you over to make sure you've got no problems. Once they're happy, you then go and see one of the team masseurs and they give you a massage. They rub your hamstrings, your quads and your calves. Make sure there's no tight spots or anything like that. Then after that, you proceed with your warm-up. I won't bore you with the warm-up, but needless to say, by about 10 to 7, all six of us are all warmed up and ready to race. The first thing that happens is our team coach will come up to us and ask me, Chris, John and Roger, are you guys okay? And we say yes. The two reserves can stand down, that's it, their job's done, they're not going to be needed. Then bang on 7 o'clock, you hear this announcement. And the announcement is asking all the teams in the men's 4 x 400 meters relay final to now make your way to tent A. And in the middle of the warm-up track, there's two tents, tent A and tent B. It's now one hour before the biggest race of your life. Physically, if you're not in shape at 7 o'clock, you can forget it by 8 o'clock. There's nothing you can do to physically get yourself in shape by 8 o'clock. You've done all the training, you've got no more time, no more weeks to get extra training in, it's all over. So if you're not in shape at 7 o'clock, you're not going to get yourself in shape by 8 o'clock. Can't happen. But mentally, if you're not quite switched on and focused and in the, you know, in the zone, whatever phrase you want to lose, use, by 7 o'clock, you've still got an hour to get yourself concentrated and mentally focused and where you need to be by 8 o'clock. Likewise, if at 7 o'clock, physically you're in shape, mentally you're in shape, you can lose that mental edge, you can lose your focus, lose mentally where you want to be by 8 o'clock. So an hour to go before any final, it's not a physical thing, it's 100% a mental game. And having been in that situation before, the British team, we decided we're not going to go to that tent at 7 o'clock, we're going to go at about 10 past 7 and start playing mind games with the rest of the teams that are competing. We'll let them think that we're not going to turn up. So we just stood around for a few minutes, looking at each other, thumbs up, giving nods and encouraging nods and that sort of stuff. And at about 8 minutes past, our team coach said, was right, come on guys, off we go. So we shook everybody's hands, said, good luck guys, and we walked towards this tent. As we were walking towards the tent, our facial expressions change. We now start to get a bit serious. The old heart starts to flutter a bit more. A few butterflies in your stomach. But by the time we got to that tent, we had our game faces on. As we got to the tent, there was a team official, or an official at the tent. He asked which team we were. We told him who we were. He ticked us off, opened the tent door, and we walked in. As we walked into the tent, we noticed we were the seventh team. So there was only six teams in there. And we walked in, you don't say anything to any athletes now, you just start eyeballing them, you start staring at them. You go into the tent, it's now time to start psyching all the other teams out. So what happens is, when you go into this tent, and a tent, a bit bigger than the stage, not much bigger than the stage, we walked into the tent, and you just pick on one athlete and you stare at them. You don't smile, you don't say hello, you try not to blink, and you certainly don't look away before they do. And when they look away, then you move on to another athlete and you just stare at them as well. People could be talking to you, you take them out, you just stare at that athlete. You're now trying to psych these guys out. Everyone is doing it to everyone. There's not noise in this tent. You hear the odd, because people are a bit nervous. But apart from that, it doesn't smell very good either. But apart from that, nobody is speaking to everybody. Everyone is just eyeballing everybody. A few minutes later, we noticed that there's only seven teams in the area, it didn't take us long to work out that the Americans haven't turned up. It's quarter past seven. All of a sudden, the Americans walk in. They too have exactly the same idea. 
stern faces, they two are staring at each other, they come in, sit down in the chairs, and you're now got all eight teams just sitting down, some guys with their headphones on, some guys chewing, chewing gum, and you're just staring at everybody. There's no TV, no radio, you're just eyeballing these guys. It is silent in there, and you're just looking at people, and you're trying to stare them out. You're literally trying to pick a fight with people. And you can see, without even speaking to anybody, the teams that are confident, because they've got a look on their faces to say, yeah, we're going to kick your butt. Yeah, we're going to kick your butt too. You definitely get a butt kicking. And you, and you. And then you look at the faces on the other teams. They don't have such a confident look on their face. But they do have a look on their face. And you can read that look on their face. And that look says, yeah, he's going to kick my butt. He's going to kick my butt. So is he, so is he. And you can see the difference between the confident team and the not so confident team. Now, I said you've got to be warmed up an hour before your race. The reason is, you have to go through a whole load of checks. So what happens is, some officials walk in and they ask the team who's running in lane one, I can't remember who it was, to come up, put their bags on the table, and they go through a series of checks. The first thing they check is to make sure you've got your correct national strip on. Whether it be vest and shorts, whether it be a skin suit, make sure it's the right one, the most up-to-date one. They also give you numbers, which you pin on, one on the front, one on the back. They give you the side numbers, and they go through a series of checks for your bags, just for security reasons, all that sort of stuff. Once that team is done, they sit down, and the team in lane two comes and does that, and they go through all eight teams. As you can imagine, it takes a little while to do this, best part of half an hour. By the time all that was done, everyone's sitting back down, it's gone nice and quiet again, it's about quarter to eight. We then get told to come out of the tent, we jump on a minibus, and the minibus drives for about a minute from the warm-up track to the main stadium. We get off the bus, we're led round to a tunnel that takes you right to the start-finish line. Just as we're just about to get onto the track at the end of this tunnel, we're stopped and we're told to sit down and put our running spikes on. And also we're told first leg runners to go out onto the track and put the starting blocks down. So we sit down, open our bags, spikes out, trainers off, spikes on. Roger's just about to go out onto the track to put the starting blocks down, because remember, he's now running the first leg. I was supposed to be, but now it's Roger. Now, the night before, when we went to see the team officials, because we wanted to change our order, we also told them, please don't tell anybody, not even in the British team, that we've changed our order. We want to keep it a bit of a secret. So when we're in this tunnel, just about to go onto the track, and we're putting our spikes on, I had an idea. And I said to Roger, give me a tape measure, and I'll go and put your starting blocks down. Let's keep the world guessing. Let them think that I am running the first leg, because that's what they expect. So Roger says, good idea, gives me his tape measure, tells me what his block measurements are, so I walk out onto the track, front block, whatever it was, set them back block, did that. I did a practice start as if they were my blocks, pretending they were my blocks. Walk back to the starting blocks, make sure they're pushed out nice and firm. Walk back into the tunnel, chuck Roger's tape measure down, give him a quick thumbs up uh, to let him know that it's all done. And I just carried on, left him to it, and I just carried on. Now, it is a World Championship final. Roger is running the first leg. It really is important that he goes out onto the track and checks his starting blocks. So nobody really <coughs> took any notice of me doing my starting blocks, because there were seven other guys doing it for seven other teams. There's officials wandering about. No one took no notice. So Roger sort of walks out onto the track into lane three, does a quick practice start. And again, I don't think too many people noticed what was going on. Then, with a minute to go, the track referee will blow a whistle. Big blast on the whistle, which basically tells you there's one minute to go before the final. And what you're supposed to do is go and get changed, get unchanged, and go and stand in your respective positions. But in fact, what actually happens is totally different. The track referee will blow the whistle, and the first thing that happens is your stomach starts going, you get the old butterflies, and the heartbeat starts going quicker, because you are nervous. And there is no problem with being nervous before a race. In fact, it's a good thing. In athletics terms, the phrase is called, you're bricking it. And there is no problem with that. As I say, it's a good thing. But the secret is to try and hide your nerves, so athletes will do weird and wonderful things to try and show that they're not nervous. I'll give you an example. Roger Black. A minute or so to go before a race, if you ever see any film footage of Roger, a minute or so to go before a race, you will see him walking around like this with his eyes closed. He'll just walk up, then he'll turn around, and he'll walk back this way with his eyes closed, and then he'll get there, then he'll turn around, and he'll walk back this way, and he just does that for a few seconds, maybe 20, 30 seconds. And the reason Roger does that is because a minute or